today we're going to talk about the dot product. So let's first start by defining it. The definition of the dot product involves two vectors. So the vector u is our usual vector notation of u1, u2, u3, and v is v1, v2, and v3. Then the dot product of u and v is the sum of the products of their components. And what that says is multiply together the components, uh, products of their components, multiply each of the related components and add them together, sum. And so we take u1 times v1, and then we add that to u2 times v2 and plus u3 times v3. An alternate way to find this is if you know the angle between the vectors, uh, considering them as position vectors that start from the origin, u dot v is given by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, and that's two numbers being multiplied together, since magnitudes represents a length and it's going to be a number, times cosine of the angle theta, where angle this, uh, where angle theta this time is um, uh, between zero and pi, so zero and 180. It's going to be this angle here, uh, as shown on the left, not the angle over there. Or if we had another set of vectors, maybe our vectors look something like this, and u, v, it would be this angle, thinking of that as pi is straight like that, not this angle, showing you know pi out there is the not this angle. So let's do an example of this. First things we're going to do is we're going to multiply together the x components of our vectors, 1 times negative 6. And then we're going to add these all up to the, the products of the other components. And then we'll multiply the y components, positive 2 times negative 2. And then we'll add that to the z components being multiplied together. Uh, negative one times negative three here. Doing that math, we get negative six minus four equals three. And notice here, the dot product takes two vectors and sort of the word multiply is not appropriate here because you're not doing multiplication, you're taking the dot product, but you're getting a numerical result. You don't get another vector, you get a number here. So what can we do with the dot product here? Notice we've moved into the application section here. Um, well, you, as we saw that from the second formula on the first slide, that there's an alternate way to find the dot product. If you know the magnitudes and the angle between the vector, you can, uh, you can find the dot product. But more usefully, we can uh, exploit this formula to find the angle between any two given vectors. Uh, presumably, if we have the vectors, we could calculate the dot product and we can calculate their magnitudes. And so we can rearrange this equation and find and see that cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u times u dot v over the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. And so we can then use trigonometry to find angle theta by taking the inverse of cosine uh, on both sides or just using the fact that we understand inverse relationships here. Um, one thing to note here is you do have to use a little bit of knowledge of, of of where we actually have the vectors. Because arc cosine will only return, or cosine inverse, um, only return values between zero to pi. And so if your vectors, well, actually, they actually pause. Uh, and so notice that this is the same uh, definition described the dot product. Let's go back two slides there. Notice that the angle theta is always the angle that's between 0 and pi. And so using this formula, it's going to be give us the angle from 0 to pi. If you need the other angle, well, then you just have to use your knowledge of, of uh, you know, basic trigonometry that if you, if you can find this angle and what you're after is this red angle, it's just going to be 2 pi or 360 degrees minus that orange angle. Okay, so let's find the angle between two vectors. Uh, let's form ourselves a triangle between the points P is 1, 0, 0, Q is 0, 1, 0, and R is 0, 2, 0, 2. Uh, we've got that triangle plotted there, and you can see the angles emphasized in that lower left-hand corner. It's angle um, RPQ or QPR, if you prefer, whichever. That's what we're after. That's our theta. And so applying our formula, um, in the roles of u and v here, let's go ahead and label these things. Well, this vector 
we could call this u, and that happens to be vector pq. So in our formula, the u dot v becomes pq. And then, uh, so in the formula, pr here is going to play the role of v. So replacing u and v, we have this. So how are we going to do this? Well, we need to find the individual pieces of the puzzle. And we aren't even given the vectors. So the first thing we're going to need to do is calculate the vectors. So for PQ, we calculate the vector PQ, and we see that PQ is negative 1, 1, 0. PR is negative 1, 0, 2. Keep in mind that these are going to be position vectors. If you plot them, they'll start from the origin, unless you tell them to start from and go between the two points. Um, now, taking the dot product of these two, we would multiply the x components. You get negative 1 times 1, uh, negative 1. And then add that to the product of the y components. And then add that to the product of the z components there to see that the dot product of these two things is going to be 1. That gives us our numerator in the inverse cosine above. The next things we need are the magnitudes of both vectors. And so we'll calculate those magnitudes, uh, taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the components to get that the magnitude of PQ is root 2 and the magnitude of PR is root 5. And then putting all of that together, we notice that if PQ is root 2 here and PR is root 5, root 2 times root 5 is equal to root 10. So the numerator, or I'm sorry, denominator in, in that expression is going to be root 10. So there's our denominator. And the dot product above came from 1 there. And so calculating that out, we see that our angle is 1.2 radians, and 70, which is about 71.6 degrees, just depending on which system you're working in or however uh, the question is being asked. Um, most calculators default to returning radians, so be careful. Um, I really like to use Desmos. Desmos has a way to change between radians and degrees as well. All right, another application of using the dot product is we can use the dot product to tell, uh, give us some information about the angle. So the sign of the dot product tells us something about the angle. Recall about what we know about the sign, S-I-G-N, positive or negativeness of cosine within the range of theta from zero to pi. Remember that uh, in radians, zero, whoops, and that needs to be a pen. Zero is the positive x-axis and anti-clockwise pi would be the negative x-axis. So here uh, for cosine, remembering that cosine of theta is equal to so kind of adjacent over hypotenuse. And so your adjacent over here in the positive x direction is going to be positive over hypotenuse is always positive. So cosine is positive. Over here in the negative x direction, your adjacent side is going to be negative. So the cosine of theta is going to be negative. And then uh, for 90 degrees or pi over 2 up here vertically, uh, the y-axis, the angle corresponding to the y-axis, well, there, the x value is going to be 0, and the adjacent side of our right triangle here, if you were imagining drawing a triangle defined by theta here, um, or this, you know, thinking of theta-ish over here, uh, reference triangles in trigonometry, uh, yeah, we would have that the, the adjacent side of our triangle here would be kind of so skinny, it's vertically at 0. And so you'd have 0 over the positive hypotenuse length, which would give you 0. OK, so what does that tell us? Well, the sine of the dot product is equal to the sine of the cosine of the angle. So if we take the dot product of any two vectors and we get that it is a positive result, we know that our angle must be in quadrant 1. Theta is less than pi over 2, and we have an acute angle. If we take the dot product and get 0, and this is a particularly useful fact, then we know that we have ourselves a right angle. And then the third row uh, of this table, fourth technically, um, if we take the dot product of two vectors and get a negative number, then we know that we have something in quadrant two and we have an obtuse angle if we were to plot it in standard position. 
So it follows from the last slide that perpendicular or orthogonal vectors will have a dot product of zero, and that is a fact. So if u and v are orthogonal, if the dot product is zero of those two. So let's kind of look at a couple examples here, and we'll work them both in. And um, yeah, so the first example, uh, u is 3, 2, and v is 4, 6. Dot product of u and v is uh, 3 times 4. Remember, u, the dot product is the sum of the products of the components, so 3 times 4 for our x components and 2 times 6 for our y components gives us positive 12 minus 12 is equal to 0. So let's just go ahead and since this is two space, I can kind of draw a quick, quick and dirty picture of these. So the vector 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, uh, u is about this. So this is vector u. And v is vector four, six. Oh, so this is a fairly sizable typo here that I didn't catch. Let me apologize here. Let's just go back and start this example over. Sometimes when you make a mistake, the best thing is to start over instead of try and find your mistake. All right, so there's a very important thing that's been left off, and that is that this y component for u needs to be negative two, not positive two. So now, the calculation down below is correct. For the x components, 3 times 4 would give us positive 12. So for the y components, negative 2 times 6 gives us negative 12. Add them together, get 0. And if we're going to plot these things, since I've got the red pen handy, I'll plot that in the red. Let's just give ourselves some tick marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just 6 in all directions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so u in red, we have got uh, positive 3 negative two. I needed some tick marks there, but you know what? I'll forgive myself for not writing them. I will just say that that's two in the negative y direction. Now for v, I don't know, we'll do v in blue for fun. Four comma six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there we go. And yeah, the picture's not perfect, but yeah, a quick and dirty graph of these shows that that sure as heck looks like a right angle. And that's another application of GeoGebra that would be nice to show that that is, in fact, they are perpendicular or orthogonal. So U and V for our second example, let's do an example in three space. Uh, 3i for U minus 2j plus k, and V is 2j plus 4k. So the sum of the components for the x components, we have 3 times 0i over here. We don't write it, but it's there. And then we'll take the, the j components. We've got positive 2 times negative 2. So, so far, we've got uh, 0 plus negative 4. And then for our z components, k, uh, 1 and 4, we have 1 times 4. So we have negative 4 plus 4. We got 0. And u and v are the orthogonal. This, this rule works in 2 space and 3 space. So the one small thing is that we use the word orthogonal instead of perpendicular here because um, even the zero vector is orthogonal with everything. So zero and u, consider that. Any vector u dot product with zero, u10 plus u20 plus u30. Reminder here, the zero vector is equal to just the vector with all components zero. It's kind of like the equivalent of the origin uh, point, position vector for the origin point. So all vectors are orthogonal to the zero vector. Well, the dot product is a very well-behaved operation. So let u, v, and w be any vectors, and r be any old real number. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you take the dot product. u, v, u dot v is the same as v dot u. Um, the dot product is associative along with some scalar multiplication. So c times u dot v is the same as u dot r times v is equal to, oh my goodness, this one's laden with typos for which I apologize. It should be r u, and that's r, all the c's are r's. So r u dot v is equal to u dot r v is equal to r dot u v. If you've got a scalar in there, you can whack it in there whenever you feel like. Um, the dot product is distributive over addition. And since it's distributive over addition, you can think of subtraction as addition by the opposite direction of a vector. It's distributive over plus or minus. And so to distribute it, we would take u dot v 
and then add it to u.w. Um, another fun thing about the dot product is u.u dot u is equal to the magnitude of u squared and zero dotted with anything is zero. Um, this is a very nice little exercise, which I encourage you to pause the video and just write it out and see if you can convince yourself that's true. Spoiler alert, it's in on almost every text. Okay. The next concept for with respect to the dot product is going to be something called vector projections. And the informal idea here is to imagine the shadow cast on you by, by a vector u onto another vector v if you held a light directly above the terminal point of the vector u. And I think that's illustrated nicely by this picture here. And so the projection is if you were to sh take a light and hold that light kind of straight down here, what shadow would vector u cast on vector v? It would cast this shadow here of the vector w, and that is the vector projection of the vector v, or um, of the vector v u onto the vector v, the projection onto v of the vector u, if you will. It's kind of how the notation is written projection onto v of u. And it's given by um, u dot v over v dot v times the vector v. Notice here that u dot v is a number because the dot product always returns a number. And so a number divided by a number, that entire coefficient, that's the entire expression here is just a number. So we're scaling the vector v down. And the picture shows that, that the projection of u onto v just scales v either down or if u is kind of quote longer than v, it would scale v longer or even in the other direction as we can see on the picture to the right. So those are vector projections. And uh, since v dot v in the, in the denominator of the coefficient is the same thing as the magnitude of v squared, you sometimes see this formula written as u dot v over the magnitude of v squared uh, scaling the vector v being multiplied by the vector v. So let's do an example of a vector projection. u is equal to 6i plus 3j plus 2k, and v is equal to i minus 2j minus 2k. Find the projection onto v of the vector u. The formula is there, and so we need the pieces of the puzzle. First, we will calculate the numerator. 6 times 1, 3 times negative two, uh, two times negative two, gives us u dot v is negative four for our numerator, which we see. And now for the second piece of the puzzle, we need the denominator v dot v. And so v dot v is one dot one, one times one, negative two times negative two, negative two times negative two. Uh, add that all up, get positive nine, and there's your denominator. And so we're scaling vector v by negative 4 ninths, which gives us negative 4 ninths i plus 8 ninths j plus 8 ninths k. So work. Uh, we're going to be brief on this one because the text has a very, very nice explanation and example of this. So let f be a constant force that moves an object in a straight path represented by the vector d. The work done by f along vector d, uh, that path, is work is equal to the force dotted with the vector d. And that's it for the dot product.